Greetings, ladies and madrigans, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. We are shooting towards 100,000 subscribers, and you can help by subscribing if you haven't subscribed already, because YouTube tends to unsubscribe people and, you know, stuff. Elbow drop that like button like you're in the intergalactic WWE. Also, drop an elbow comment down below in the description. All of this helps the channel. Anyways, on to the story. Humans are how old? Written by Random3x. Glimpo was very pleased with himself. He'd passed all of his tests and had been selected for a delegation to meet with the first alien race that he had ever encountered. It had been generations since first contact, and discussions had been dragging out. Glimpo's greatest wish was to finally close negotiations his forefathers had started. Entering the room where the meeting was meant to take place, he pressed the keypad with the door to announce his arrival. I remember when we had to knock, an older member of the delegation grumbled. First contact and the initial stages of discussions had been done planet side. This was the first to be done on a human ship fitted to accommodate their race. To think that these slow beings took eight plucks to alter a vessel, the older member continued to grumble. All due respect, sir, their machinery may be more complex than ours. It was the case that a few pieces of technology that had been gifted had been reverse engineered. They weren't any marvels of function, but they were beyond complex by their race's standards, from the reports Glumbo had read. Ah, welcome delegates, a human said, standing up as the group entered the room. The delegates felt their breath freeze in their throats. They had only seen hollow images of a race identified as humans. I see the halls were not to impress power upon visitors, the old member of the group whispered, looking up at the human who stood a good twice their height. They had naturally assumed the race that they were meeting was the same height as them, a failure the data team would no doubt be reprimanded for. I hope that we can finish these negotiations today. It has been a little while since we started, and the people back home are eager to start trade. Yes, the old member barked. We would have finished these discussions blocks ago had you not delayed so much. I apologize for the delays. It took us a little while to retrofit parts of the ship to suit your people better. I was but a newborn pup when you landed, and now I can finally see my race upon the greatest stage of the universe. Indeed, uh, we had prepared all the documents you requested. With a flick of his finger on the data slate he was holding, the group felt a buzz from the device, appearing on the screen were all agreed upon provisions. Finally! It is good to be here, Blimpo grinned as he read over the document before spotting something. Apologies, human, but what are these numbers here? Numbers? The human repeated, arching a brow. Oh, those are the date. Ah, uh, I thank you. The date, the old delegate barked. Uh, the progression seems off. Do you measure time differently from us? Uh, it, it never really came up, but uh, it is likely, as we are from a different world. I see. Uh, I, I suppose that does make sense. The old member marked the document with a digital stamp to indicate his agreement, as did the others in the group. Perfect. With that, we can now proceed with the celebration. Walking over to the wall, the human pressed a wall-mounted device, and machines immediately began bringing out plates of cuisine from their home world. As the other members of the delegation helped themselves to the food and drink, Glimpo couldn't help but gaze out the window, looking down at the crimson orb that was his home world, a view afforded to so very few, but would soon become a commonplace. Beautiful view, isn't it? The human diplomat said, walking up to stand beside Glimpo. Yes, it is amazing. I still remember when we first arrived here. It was a sight to behold, seeing all the cities light up in the world at night. You, you mean your ancestors? Hmm? Oh, oh no, I, I was part of the crew when we first surveyed this world. But, then, uh, that was close to 100 plucks ago. Glimpo's outburst had paused the celebrations as all his fellows now looked at him with shock for his outburst. Something no diplomat worth his fur should do. Uh, I must apologize for my outburst. Uh, no need. Uh, one moment, the AI is still deciphering blocks. It seems to be a new word the auto-translator units we are using hadn't identified. The human looked at the data slate as the AI worked out the meaning. But to Glimpo, it was odd. A block was a block. Every newborn cub learned its meaning by the end of their very first. Ah! The human exclaimed excitedly. I see the meaning now. Glimpo, was it? 
Blumpo nodded. A block is what my race calls a month. Month, Blumpo echoed as he realized the humans had another word for their unit of time. So your race arrived here some hundred months ago? The human nodded. Yes, we had to take things slowly so as to not cause chaos. We slowly contacted your government and created vaccines so that we didn't cause plagues. It's why we took so long. So you must be old then? Blumpo asked, looking up at the human with awe. There were only stories and fairy tales of races living as long as the human was saying, Oh boy, I do feel old. I turned 30 only last month. 30? Glumpo tilted his head, letting his ears flop in confusion. But you said that you were amongst those who first found us. Mm, oh, I'm sorry. I, I meant years. Years? Glumpo's heard the ping from his data slate, revealing it meant roughly 12 blocks. Glumpo felt his heart rate quicken as he did the maths. So you're 361 plucks. The entirety of the party of diplomats froze in shock, looking at the human, a being older than any of the nations they called home. You mean this youngster is actually older than I am? The old member of the group asked, trembling. It was a common point amongst their race that with age comes wisdom, and with wisdom comes the right to rule. Well, uh, I mean, uh, when you put it like that, uh, I, I guess so. How old are you, Glumpo? You must be a few years old. Uh, I would roughly be two of your human years. Two? So the eldest of your number is... Uh, roughly seven by your years, the old member declared. Wow, no wonder your race kept changing the diplomats that we were talking with. We kept thinking that we were doing something wrong. Now I'll need to have a word with the data team about this one. But to think that your race ages at the street... Though, uh, it would explain your broadcasts. B b broadcasts The first thing we detected about your world was broadcasts. We thought that it was a translation error, a malfunction or even an interference that made it run at a faster rate. But to think that you live your lives faster than imaginable. Human, are you an old member of your race? Glumpo asked, hoping the human was just a very old member. Me? Oh no, I still have my grandparents. Grandma, though, is a more machine than the Nan these days, but she celebrated her 90th. Oh, a thousand plucks, so many generations with one being. <laughs> the human began before pausing, feeling the awkward atmosphere descending. Guess we are the equivalent of elves, then. Elves? Glumpo repeated, hoping for a reprieve. Yeah, back on our world, we have a story about a race of beings called elves. They looked just like us, but had pointed ears and lived millennia. The data slates all pinged, and the delegates all paled, seeing the word meant a thousand iterations of a year. But you don't need to worry. There are all but fairy tales and stories. All due respect, human, a being living as long as you do to us would be from stories and myths for us. How confident are you they aren't out there? Well, bugger. I guess we'll need to look out for the possibility of space cells. Just hope they aren't the Warhammer kind. End of story. Story number two. Do not gamble with humans. Do not play games of chance with humans. Do not wager with humans. Written by Adjutant Stormy. Commodore Robert Tennyson was sat at a table at the Orbital Pub with Erendani Ambassador Rethick. Between the drinks and initial discussions of normalized relations, they had settled into a cordial, if adversarial, relationship. Tennyson had been sent to smooth relations with the Eridani, with diplomatic carte blanche to make it happen. The Eridani were proud industrialists, looking akin to an earth gecko, and saw Terran space as a chief competitor. Terran ships and equipment were undercutting them, as good enough was the motto of the Terran engineer. From the shipyards on Luna and Mars, mass-produced trash by Eridani standards were flooding the market. The phrase serviceable covered their marketing. It works, but no warranty. Meanwhile, the Eridani shipyards above Epsilon Eridani 4 would produce masterworks, warrantied for millennia. Eridani's shipyard motto was, in galactic common, the last ship you'll ever buy, guaranteed for 500 light years before first service. The drinks had yet to mellow the Rathic's adversarial nature, so Robert proposed a game, human poker, specifically Texas Hold'em. The Commodore had been dispatched with a budget of 200,000 galactic credits to make the Eridani see reason. Ambassador Rathic 
saw no reason not to take the human's currency as well as his dignity. After learning the rules of this human game, he ascertained the odds and probabilities of the adversarial game of chance. Being consummate engineers, the Iridani had a potential instinct for mathematics. Rezik was certain his abilities in this field were far outstretched the human counterpart. The flop came. Kings of spades, king of hearts, queen of spades. Commodore Robert Tennyson had lost his shirt and shoes and breeches. Even while trying to count cards, his Iridani counterpart had cleaned him out. His ambassadorial budget lay in a mountain of chips his opponent had in front of their seat. A double or nothing, Robert declared. Rethick was confused. The man had nothing left to wager. Rethick dealt the cards. He had a king and a queen, an excellent hand, and a greater than 80% chance of victory. Robert Tennyson decided, in the human fashion, to go all in. Not personally, the alien across the table already had his goddamn shoes after all, but he did have diplomatic carte blanche, a blank check from Terra. I bet the orbital works of Luna, the Commodore said with far more confidence than was warranted. You, you what? Rethick spat in disbelief. You heard me, the Commodore spoke softly. Care to see my bet? Rethick seethed. The currency on this table is a pittance compared to your frankly insane wager. Fine, we will counter with a hundred-year lease, not ownership, of Epsilon Eridani for orbital works. Betting a revocable lease against the ownership of a primary orbital seemed to sound plan to the ambassador. Not that their subpar construction facilities could make Eridani quality ships. Commodore Robert Tennyson, in their stupidest gamble of his young life, and that included evading a superior fleet by diving next to a black hole, Agreed. He had pocket aces, and by the flop, he was still 100% bluffing. With their betting done, the next card, two of diamonds. The final card, an ace of diamonds. Rethick shows his hand. I'm sorry, Commodore. Full house. Kings over queens. I will enjoy dismantling your subpar construction facilities. Robert grins. Not so fast, my friend. Full house. Aces over kings. I'll enjoy renovating your shipyard. Don't worry, there's no backing out. Seventeen of the other patrons of the spa are Terran Security. Our gain has been live-streamed for the Terran Security Council. No weaseling out of our wager. The Commodore continued. Did I wager a major planetary body on a 1.5% chance that I'd win? You bet your sweet ass I did. I honestly did not expect you to call. Well, what's done is done. We all learned something very important today. If a human wants to bet... Don't. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.